Glory to God. Hallelujah. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I'd like to invite everyone to stand up. We're going to open the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 5, and chapter 2, and chapter 2, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. Habakkuk 1, 5, and 2, 1, 2, 3. Habakkuk 1, verse 5. Look amongst the nations and watch, be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were <coughs> told you. Now, chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Let us wait for the projection. I will stand my watch and set myself on the ramp rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tables that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an ap appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry Lord we thank you for the, the pleading that you have renewed in our lives I ask you also that in your word we may bless your people we are praising the holy name of Jesus Amen the church may be seated My brethren, in the time of Habakkuk, the prophet, the people of God was was being um, punished by the Chaldeans and the prophet Habakkuk. He makes an intercession and a plea to the Lord. And he comes to the Lord and says, Lord, Why are you causing me to see the iniquity, the shame, the destruction, the violence that are before me? And those that seek uh, the argument, the law is being relaxed, the sentence never comes out, the unfaithful serve the just, and the sentence of the just is just is perverted so he plead to the Lord and he present before the Lord his considerations and God gives an answer to him because God always give us give us an answer there's a text in the Bible that said would I hide what I do to Abraham but I hide what I do to Abraham because Abraham was a friend of God and Habakkuk was also a friend of God. The name Habakkuk means embrace or the one that is embraced. And there's a verse in the Bible that says the following, the Lord embraced my soul. So Habakkuk the Lord wanted to show and reveal to Habakkuk that he was being embraced, his soul was being embraced. 
So in other words, it was being preserved, comforted on those days, those days of uh, arguing and violence and unfair loss. And the Lord shows to Habakkuk, and he says, Habakkuk, you are looking to all of those things, the violence, arguing, litigation, just being surrounded by the unfaithful. But, what, but I want to show you another thing, Habakkuk, and says, look amongst the nations. Watch, you can, you can see all the nations that you know can look around. Take a look around and exam. A while, look, take a look upon all the nations and seek. Look amongst the nations. What I, I have to do in your life to your life, to your home, to my people. And he says the following. Look among the nations and watch. And he says, be utterly astounded. Be, be amazed. And then he says something interesting. He says, For I will work a work in your days. So that prophecy, that vision, was not for the time of Habakkuk, but it was for our time, our days of the violence, of the litigation, of the argument, of the law that is laxed the unfair laws. It is for this day, it is for this time. And it says, look, you have already looked to all the thi those things, but Habakkuk, at this time, in these days, I am doing a work. There are difficulties, adversities that faithful are being surrounded, but a work is being worked. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now God asks Habakkuk not to look uh, to the other things, but to look to the work that he was doing in those days, in our days. Because it's very common for us to look to the adversity. I raise my eyes to the mountains, to the mountain of problems. But we forget to look to where our help will come from. And my help and your help comes from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Habakkuk was worried about many things. But there was only one thing that was necessary, which was the word of the Lord Jesus that he gave to Martha that was tired. And he said, Martha, there is only one thing that is necessary. And the Lord wanted to show to Habakkuk and today in our days that he is working a work, a wonderful work. And to all of those that see it and admire it, and it says the following, my brethren, that you will not believe. Philip, he was looking for uh, a person called Nathaniel, and he came to Nathaniel and said, I found the one that is written on the law of Moses and the prophets, Jesus of Nazareth. So then he, is he, he answered, can something good come out of uh, Nazareth? So Philip proclaimed, he spoke up about a work that the Lord was doing at those days but who heard it didn't believe. 
However, Philip, filled with the Holy Spirit, said something interesting. You know what he said, my brother? Come and see. Come and see. It is worthless for me to speak about this work because you're not going to believe. So then come and see. I met Jesus. I had an experience of salvation with him. You don't believe? Come and see. So then the word of the Lord says, my brother, that that man went there to see. And when he came close to Jesus, Jesus said something to sing to him. Before Philip called you, I saw you before below the fig tree. When he heard Jesus saying those things, he said, Rabbi, Son of God, King of Israel. And Jesus said, Man, Nathaniel, because I said that I saw you under the fig tree, you're believing. You see greater things than those from this day forward. You, you see the angels of God coming, going up and down up, upon the Son of Man. This is the work that we're speaking about today. The work where the Holy Spirit, uh, the angels are going up and down from heaven into this place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Saul was on the road to Damascus and a light came down and fell to the ground and the voice of the Lord said, I am the Lord whom you persecute. He didn't believe. He heard a lot about Jesus, but he didn't believe it. until the day when Jesus presented himself before him. And that's the work, work of ex personal experience with our Savior. My brethren, in a certain moment, Apostle Paul, he was describing his experience, the experience that he had with God. In, there, in, there in the book of Acts, when the fast heard the experience that Paul had with God, fasted, shouted out, Are you crazy, Paul? The many words are causing you to uh, have visions. He didn't believe because he didn't have an experience with the Lord. Because his work is a work of ex experiences with the Lord. And to those who have experience with God, they believe in this work. They believe in the plan and project of, da of God for our life. And the word says, you don't believe when things are told you to you, and are told to you, but it's necessary to testify, it's necessary to speak. But when the person doesn't believe, then you, you, come, you tell the person, come and see, come and see the glory. Come and see the power of God. So the Lord, tell those things to Habakkuk. He speaks of this work that was being done, that is being done in our days. And when Habakkuk becomes aware of the plan, the project, and the work that he was leaving, Brethren, he does something interesting. He says, I will be watchful. So now I have a responsibility. Right? have something to keep. What do we have to keep? The faith, the love in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I fought a good battle, finished my race, and kept my faith. A faith is a firm foundation. It was not an experience that was told about, but an experience that he lived with his Savior. He said, I will keep my faith under my watch I will be keeping, I will be vigilant, I will be paying attention. I will be preserving the project of God in my life. And he says the following. Upon the fortress I will present myself. And the song by Martin Luther, he's, he says, my fortress, my castle is my fortress. Who is our fortress? Is Lord Jesus. Whoever inhabiting the uh, of the uh, almost high will be saved. He will present himself on the fortress in a strong castle in the house of God in the eternity of God. And he had to keep a couple of things in order 
to present himself before the Lord was a conviction and assurance that he had of salvation, that one day he would present on the fortress. And he said, I will be watchful. So when Jesus, when he comes to his disciples and gives an advice, be watchful and pray. Be watchful and pray. So it was a, a person that was vigilant, or that was paying attention to everything that was happening around him. So my brethren, the moment in which we're living is a moment of vigils, a moment we need to be vigilant, a moment in which we need to be at, pay attention to the signs that are being fulfilled in our lives, in our days. Uh, we, people are getting anguished, the trumpets are being sounded, it's time for you to awake from the from this sleep. It's time for us to participate for this great work that the Lord has for our lives. He says the following, my brethren. I will watch to see who is speaking with me. So, my brethren, we need to see who is speaking with us. The man called Bartimaeus, he had a faith because he had heard about, and the faith of hearing about led him to Jesus. But the faith of hearing about had not given to Bartimaeus the salvation. Job, he believed in God, he was just and righteous, feared, feared the Lord because he had heard about the Lord. But the justice of Job was, would not justify him before the Lord. He didn't have salvation. That's why he said, I, before I knew you from here about, but now my eye sees you. So when Bartimaeus present before the voice that was speaking with him, and the voice asked, what do you want me to do? And he answered, to see. And what did he see? He saw the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, that voice, the voice spoke to him. See, your faith saved you. With salvation, you see the Lord. You have an experience concrete and real with God. And that's what Paul had and the, the other disciples also had. A meeting with the Lord. And he says the following. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And while what I will answer when I am corrected. When God speaks to you, what is the answer that you have for him? When the Lord speaks to me, what is the answer that, that I have to give to the Lord? A man called Samuel said, Speak, Lord, because your servant is listening. He had an answer to God. He presented before the Lord and he had an answer to the Lord. Apostle Paul, when he presented the Lord, he said, Who are you, Lord? You are the Jesus that you persecute. And from that day forward, he began to serve the Lord. He had a word to the Lord. And what am I going to answer to the Lord? He did my bread. He, God is speaking about another question. What is the, and what, it, what I will answer when I'm corrected? When I'm accused, what am I going to answer? I'm going to answer, my brother and sister, that I'm part of a great work. I'm going to answer that the blood of Jesus purified me of all my sins. I'm going to answer that God loved me in such a way that I sent His Son Jesus so that if I believe, I will not die, but I will live forever. When I'm corrected, when I'm, I'm accused, in the book of Revelation, I speak of a uh, uh, court, tribunal of Christ. And Job, one, one of the friends, Job accused Job, he said, now is it, there's a witness in heaven, and the one that will pay my bill in heavens. When you are corrected, 
you're called before the judge to explain themselves. He need to prove that they are innocent. And they need to show the means to justify their innocence. And one day the Bible says that every man will present before the throne of uh, the judgment of God and the only thing that can absolve man is the faith in Christ Jesus is to know that we have been washed and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus which was a sacrifice of Christ that gave me the opportunity to come before the just judge not to be condemned but to be absolved by him blessed be the name of the Lord and says the following then the Lord answered me and said so then he answered to God and God answered to him and God said the following write the vision he was, he was having a vision the vision is speaking about the destruction of the enemy and the freedom the freeing of Israel people of God so then write the vision so register what you are seeing your experience with God, my brother and sister, register it. He needs to be registered. Your intimacy with God. What God spoke to you, the vision, the spiritual gift, register it. Keep it in a protected place because it is for our preservation of our salvation. Inside the following, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. In those days, the instruction of the Lord, they were written a, a small tablets that were made of uh, clay. And they made an instruction to the Lord that was, they were placed on the house of the prophet. There's a text in the Bible that says the following. Apostle Paul says the following. Not with ink, but with the Spirit of the Living God, not in tables of stone, but on the tablets of flesh of the heart. God spoke to Habakkuk to write a vision, but not was not on a small tablet. But he says, and make it plain on tablets, and more than one ta tablet in tablets so that it would be pretty clear and visible, so that the person that was running would be able to see. It was the first outdoor in history. If you see an outdoor, you can drive fast in a motorcycle or a car, and you are still able to see it. It was the first outdoor, and an outdoor was very easily readable. Now, easy to understand. Any person could stop and read and understand. Because that vision would demonstrate the death of the enemy and the, and the freedom of Israel and demonstrated the work the Lord wanted to perform in the life of his people. My brother, this outdoor of God, this tablet that is easily readable, was erected one day on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, when he goes to the height of that mountain there, that was the outdoor God. That was the message of the cross. That was saying that to the world that this Jesus that was being crucified, he died to give lives and abundant life. He died to save us. He died to forgive our sins, to erase our trans all our transactions. And the Lord says the following, and make it plain on pl tablets that he may run who reads it. And the Bible says that when a person, Revelation says, in the last days, people will be running from one side to another. It was, uh, well, that was a time where people would be running around. Today, is, uh, we live in these days, or we are racing back and forth. Everything that we do is in a run. So you, my wife keep complaining, you're always racing. This is our time, the time of running around. 
the time in which we are living, a work of the Lord is being performed. And the race of our daily lives is not an excuse for us not to look at, to the plan and project of God and salvation of our souls, which is Christ Jesus. Running so that we, the one who is running is still able to read. So that, or, in other words, to the one who, can, who is reading also can run because we are in haste for everything in our lives. I'm not judging anyone here because I'm saying us. I'm in this group. But in this moment of haste, we need to also be in haste for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to be in haste and get ready for this moment, the moment of the end, the moment of the time called soul. It is a tweaking of an eye. Of an eye. The work of the Lord has the church of the Lord will return to eternity. And it says also, my brethren, verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. For the vision, this work that's been done in our days, is for this time, this time of running around, this time of the inefficiency of the Lord, this time of violence, this time of injustice, but the message of the cross prevails. The Lord said the following, but at the end it will speak so that the departure of God goes all the way to the end because he is the end because he is the beginning and the end so all the way to the end to the last days of the church the church will continue to speak about the death and the love and the grace and the favor and the mercy of the Lord I'm going to speak that Jesus died and he is resurrected and he is alive and operates in our midst and more than that because the message of the primitive church is that Jesus died and resurrected but the message of our time is that Jesus the one who resurrected is going to come back in that's been in the Lord and he's coming to, on the end that's why the message of Christ till I die will proclaim and I will carry also my Christ because now my brethren the vision is written here and my tablet, tablet on my heart, not with ink, but with the Spirit of the Living God. Now it's time to testify of this work the Lord is doing. Violence is not important. What is important is the work is being done. The important is the work is being written in our hearts. The important is that in this moment of haste, we also in haste for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And says the following, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. The Bible says, my brethren, that Jesus is the truth. I am alive, says the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a lie. And the Bible says also, Though it tarries, wait for it. The Lord is expecting us to get ready for His second coming because that's different. Because Jesus has not returned yet. It's written in the book of Revelations. You know why Jesus has not returned yet? Because the number of, sa of the saved is not fulfilled. Maybe my name in your, in your name needs, still needs to be written in the book of life. The Lord is not being Terry. He's waiting for us to make this decision to be in haste to go up into the fortress of God and to present before God. And if I tarry, I wait for you. You know, my brethren, because the one who believes in Jesus is not in haste. He waits in the Lord. I waited on the Lord with trust, and He inclined His ear to me. They heard my supplication, my prayer, my supplication. Rest on the Lord, because surely He'll come. It will not tarry. Once again, the book of Revelation 22, 
verse 20, or maybe 20, 22. Let me open it. Open it up. 22, 20. It says, the one who testified those things says, Surely I come quickly. The Lord Jesus is saying that He is coming. Jesus is coming. Maranatha. The Lord Jesus is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Surely He will come and not tarry. Amen. church will stand up. The Lord has shown a man, and a while ago, he, he walked on the ways of the Lord, but the feelings of his heart caused him 
to go astray from the presence of the Lord. This man has tried to go back until yesterday. Because today, he has returned to the presence of the Lord. And as I said on the verse of the book of, of Paul, he's now writing his pro God's project in the heart of this man, not with ink, but with the Spirit of God, so that from this day forward he may walk with security in the presence of the Lord and not to allow, because man's heart is sitful that wants to deviate from the project that God has for his life. Lord, we thank you because you have helped us to this day, have been brought comfort to us, has gotten us ready for one day to present before your face, Lord. We praise you for your holy name because every sin was forgiven in our lives through the precious blood of Jesus and for the assurance, Lord, that one day we will live eternally with you in your eternity. We praise you and Praise your holy name, because your work is being every day being kept in our hearts. It's being preserved, Lord, not by us, but of our Holy Spirit, Lord, getting us ready for this moment, which is the the moment of the, the second coming of our Son. We praise your holy name for this, and we plead, Lord, that we may send us home in peace under your protection. We pray, ask you, O Lord, your blessing in the holy name of Jesus. In the name you say, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to have a meeting Pastor Renew, and tomorrow after the service, we're going to have a meeting with the women they are part of the group of women. And you who are with us, you are welcome to this place. We have service every Thursday at 8 o'clock. Tuesday and Thursday at 8 o'clock. Saturday at 7.30. And Sunday uh, school and also at uh, your service. And next week we're going to have the event with the youth in, in Brandington. We were, we're going to be praying in, regarding this so that the Lord may give experience to them. And March 24th, this month, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we have this event, our meeting and seminar with children, intermediary, and adolescents. Group B will meet on the upper room there. And if you need a prayer, just raise your hand. And the brother will give assistance at this moment. <laughs>